Welcome back, ladies, to another episode of the Modern Female Podcast. I'm your host, C, and as always, I am so grateful that you joined me today. We've arrived at the end of February, and I hope that it's been a good month for you and that you were able to make the best of it. I hope you followed along in my self-love Feb challenge and that you feel a little bit more loved by now, whether you're in a relationship or you're single. And that's actually a great segue into the topic for this week, which is that I, being currently very single, am actually very afraid of being in an intimate romantic relationship with someone. And I think today's topic is going to be a bit heavy, so just giving you a bit of a warning. So yeah, it's so strange because I've talked about dating on here a few times now and knowing what I deserve and even before this podcast I have a whole journey around this. I think I mentioned it in episode 10 where I talked about not playing hard to get and that is that I have been that girl who was just desperate to find a man, any man who would take me. I would sit and stare at my phone waiting for the response and I would obsess and just start dreaming about how amazing it's going to be that I'm finally going to have somebody by my side to love me and in my desperation I never actually managed to get into a relationship. I think honestly I was far too desperate, far too intense and very 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 clingy and if I did find somebody who did want me of course I would be completely turned off by the fact that they're interested in me because that makes sense and Looking back, I realized that really they were mirroring back to me how I acted around the people I liked. All in all, it was very messy and it took a lot of self-reflection and reading and even soul searching for me to understand what made me so quote unquote unappealing to the guys that I wanted. At one point, I finally realized that so much of it really came from my past. I didn't grow up seeing very many healthy relationships of any kind, not just romantic. And a lot of my ideas for love came from pop culture, which I've said before, I'll say it again, pop culture influences influences us in the worst ways. Honestly, it is a shame how much it can take over how we view life. Like sometimes I will go back and I'll watch a movie or a TV show from my childhood just for the nostalgia of it and I start to cringe at how unrealistic and unhealthy like the way everyone is acting in those shows and movies. I also personally struggled with friendships as a child and it's actually something I still kind of struggle with internally. I have trouble with being vulnerable with the people who are my friends right now even though They've been around for such a long time and they haven't done anything to break my trust. I won't dive too deep into this today, I'm going to leave that for another episode. But the point is, there are aspects of my life growing up that really skewed how I understood relationships and how I understood love. And more than that, how I thought that those things reflected on me. So I had these less than ideal, less than positive experiences as a child when it came to relationships and as I grew up my experiences reinforced those ideas and in turn reinforced my belief that I am not lovable. I had many guys only looking for sex when they came to me and more often than not they would just ghost me. I've had so many so many encounters with guys where they will literally plan a whole date, confirm the day, the time, everything, and then on the day of, they'll ghost me. And surprisingly, some of them even have the audacity to come back later, like nothing happened. It is insane to me what men, like what men think. But all of this added to my beliefs because why else would a guy not care about anything but having sex with me? Or why else would he just randomly stop talking to me? I must be gross. I must not have anything to offer that someone else would see as valuable, clearly. And it was very dark for me. My mind, my emotions spiraled a lot as those experiences added to this untrue belief of mine and it wasn't really until a year ago that I finally managed to find tools that not only helped me understand myself and what has shaped me but also actually like clicked in my brain 
I don't know if it was the delivery of these messages or if it was just me being more open at the time, but it's not like I had never heard that I am valuable and lovable and that any idiotic thing a guy does isn't on me, it's on him. I had so many people in my life who really saw me and all of my value, but it didn't hit home for me until about a year ago, and I am so grateful that it finally did. It's not that it was a sudden switch for me. Like, for years before, I actually had been working on improving my outlook on life in general by focusing on other areas. I was trying to build myself up in different departments like looks and work and school. It's not that I didn't also try and fix my love life, but like I said, it just never really clicked for me. It was the hardest part of my beliefs to try and change, if that makes sense. But once it did click, I was able to make huge strides fairly quickly. I don't know, maybe you could say that lockdown has something to do with that too. But in a year, I have changed my outlook on myself and my love life drastically. My confidence has significantly improved for all areas of my life. And I definitely understand what kind of partner would suit me and what I actually desire. And I think I have actually been attracting way better people in turn. I don't put up with nonsense anymore, I don't settle for less than what I now know I deserve, and overall I feel really powerful because I know myself and my power. But I've realized lately that it doesn't end there, the journey doesn't stop there. It's not that I'm confident now and I'm just going to find the perfect man for me and have the perfect career and live happily ever after. Even though I know I can and I will have those things because I deserve them, I'm really, really terrified of what it's going to be like to actually receive them. The first point is that I've never even experienced a relationship. The longest I've made it with somebody was like three months, and it was actually right before I had all of these realizations about myself. Very, very, like, right before the beginning of lockdown, you can say. And in those three months that I dated this person, we were never exactly exclusive. We would just like go out for a meal and then come back to one of our places, hook up, and then wait for the next week to do that again. And looking back, yeah, it was as bad as it sounds. And honestly, I can say I will never go back to that. I was miserable when I was going through it. But Yeah, I don't know how to actually coexist with someone in a relationship. I don't know what that looks like. And I don't know what I'll look like. What if all of the bad parts of me surface and drive him away? What if I regress back to being desperate and clingy and he just loses interest in me? Or the worst thing, what if everything that I've progressed to now is just me pretending and Any guy that will date me will see right through it and see that I was actually right the first time. I am unlovable. There is a lot of fear, obviously, but I refuse to put myself back in that place that I was in before. These fears are the same beliefs that I've had for a very long time. And yes, they're still here, but so is all of my progress. And Yeah, it tries its best to drown out the fears, even though it's not really successful most of the time, or sometimes, I won't even say most of the time, sometimes it's not successful. I have always wanted a relationship, you know, and I really desired that feeling of being loved and having companionship with somebody. And I used to be in a place where I felt anyone could give that to me, it's just that they won't. But now I've realized that not everyone's capable. And at the same time, I don't just want it from anybody anyway. At this point, I really think that it's just a matter of taking the plunge. And when the seemingly quote-unquote right person comes along, I'm just going to have to see how it goes. There's really no other way of tackling that fear of the unknown that comes with the idea of relationships for me personally. And... I also have to work on mentally accepting that just like a relationship as a whole can't be expected to be perfect, neither can I. 
at least like the right person wouldn't have that kind of unrealistic realistic expectation from me. You know what I mean? There will be room for both of us to be human and have our moments where we might be triggered and we might be less than kind and moments that we will have to apologize to each other for. But that is the kind of relationship I am manifesting for myself. One that I believe is realistic because it has understanding right up there with attraction and passion and love and happiness and experience and all of those amazing, beautiful things that are glorified about relationships. <sighs> okay, all right. I warned you that would be heavy. I feel like it was pretty heavy. So I'm just going to stop there for today. I know that the episode is going to be a bit shorter than usual, but I don't want to drag on such a depressing topic because really I do feel that it is depressing and it's okay to admit that not everything has this insane amount of positivity attached to it that we can always pull out and see. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to let that just hang in the air there. You can let me know what you guys think. I'm not sure how many of you find yourself in the same position as me or somewhere along like the little journey that I kind of explained, but just know that whatever you feel, I, I'm here with you. I understand a lot of the feelings from the various points of this little journey and I know that we can make it out on the other side. Okay, and with that, let's get into the spirit spirituality segment for this week. As always, you guys know, I am using the Work Your Light Oracle deck by Rebecca Campbell, and if you'd like to see what cards I'm looking at and talking about today, head over to my Instagram highlights and also make sure that you're following me on Instagram. Okay, so this week's card is the Star Mother. So how can you mother yourself? And here we have an image of a woman all in blue. Honestly, she looks like Mary, Jesus' mother. And I think she's holding something, a baby. Can't see very well. I don't have the greatest lighting right now. That's on me. Um, no. Okay, I got better lighting. Sorry. <laughs> she is not holding a baby. She is holding herself. She is loving herself. She has roses at her feet. She is on the moon, up in the clouds, the stars behind her. She is the star mother. And she is mothering herself. And that is the question on this card as well. I don't know if I mentioned that. How can you mother yourself? Um, this really brings the idea to me of like reparenting yourself. That's an idea I've seen a lot with like, online um, accounts that talk about therapy and psychotherapy, psychology, about how sometimes we come with wounds from our childhood that are um, internalized and that kind of become a belief system for ourselves, just like what I felt for a very long time about myself and I'm still working on getting over. And really, it becomes a matter of like having to mother yourself because in those spaces, in those areas of your life, you kind of still have that, that belief is f developed when you were a child. So it's like, it's kind of like a childlike belief. I'm not a the psychotherapist. So of course, like do your own research on this. Don't just sit here and take my word for it as if I'm an expert on it. But the idea basically is, is that there are parts of you that are still kind of like not like almost stuck in your childhood. And it's up to you to kind of be that parent for yourself sometimes and just let yourself know that it's going to be okay and that you can get over these things and make that place safe for you. Because a lot of the times things are basically a trauma response, right? Um, it's just as a child, what you think um, is going to help you survive whatever is going on. And so that kind of becomes your survival technique often as you grow up. And it kind of gets, again, stuck in that childhood area. So you have to parent yourself out of that. I really feel like that is something I've had to do for myself. Um, not just in the last year, like I said, I've been really trying to develop and work on myself, like beyond just the past year. 
And that is something that I have noticed I've had to do for myself, which is like soothe myself where I'm noticing that something is bringing up old emotions and kind of talk myself through things like <laughs> as if I'm a parent talking to a child. So I feel like this is really a nod to that. I think it ties in really beautifully with what I've talked about um, in today's episode as well. And you guys know the drill. I'm going to go ahead and read from the little booklet that comes with the deck as well. So Star Mother, how can you mother yourself? You are more held than you could possibly imagine, loved and cherished so dearly that if you knew, you would not spend one second of your life in separation, worry, or fear. Let the mother carry your burdens. Let her rock away your fears. Lay all of your worries, regrets, shame, and guilt on her altar. Please, please, sweet child, do not fear. You are love in motion. If you allow it, you are already healed. Let her remind you of your goodness. Let her love away your fears. Your capacity to love and hold others is limited to your capacity to love and hold yourself. Be compassionate with your sweet body, mind, and soul. Treat yourself like the beautiful spirit that you truly are. Remind yourself that you are doing your best and try not to carry it all on your own. You have got this, and the mother has got you. Let her broad arms take away your burdens. Let her lift the weight of the world off your shoulders. Forgive yourself, my dear, sweet child of the earth. So I know I've mentioned this before. I know that these cards really, really have a spiritual element to them. And I mean, that is why I've called this part of the podcast episode, the spirituality segment, but that doesn't mean it can't be applied in a more secular sense as well. Again, this is an idea that is in psychotherapy as well, and it really is just about loving yourself and knowing that you you can work things out, you can survive. We are all designed to survive, um, and life throws different things at different people, but literally our instinct is to survive whether you look at that in a secular scientific sense or in a spiritual sense um you have it in you to whether you think that's your soul or in your cells to keep going and move forward and survive okay i think that's going to do it for the reading for today as always i hope that the message that message resonated for you and that you enjoyed my very vulnerable journey of growth and self-love in this week's episode. Next week and next month will be lighter, I promise. We, next month, are going to be taking a look at some major pop culture moments that I think attest to how pop culture can really mess with your head. And we'll be starting with the very famous and iconic Breakfast at Tiffany's. So make sure you're following me on your favorite podcast app and on Instagram and YouTube. All of the links, as always, are in the show notes. Thanks again, ladies, for joining me, and I can't wait to speak to you all again next week. Bye!